Hello, welcome to another episode of Mystery Commander Theater 100. I'm Reptile and I'm joined by Synergistic. Hey everybody, this is a special game. Uh, we're actually not playing in this game, Reptile and I will actually be the first one that we don't get to play in. And it's a game we recorded at our local game store with some local players that participate in their CDH tournament. This is our current our local game store, uh, Level 7 Games, which is where we usually go play on CDH tournaments on Saturdays. So, pretty cool one. Um, we'll jump into the game here pretty soon. So, let's just go check out the commanders before we do that. All right, so first we have Kane, Pytaline, Kenrith. This is uh, just a five color good stuff build with a lot of different ways to um, generate infinite mana and win through Kenrith's abilities. Luke is going to be playing Kinnon, so just Kinnon combo with Basalt Monolith and also bringing out some big mid-range threats. We have Mark playing Tyam, and this is more of a, a stacks deck that utilizes a lot of unique counter interactions to, uh, to really control the board. And good old reliable Tim Necrom piloted by Dr. Vuski, so. You know, it's Blue Farm, looking to go quick. Awesome. A uh, good set of commander. Let's just jump into the opening hands. All right, so Kane's opening hand kept the first, uh, kept the seven. Looks like it's just four lands with Brain Freeze and Intuition as really the main combo line that he's going to be going for here. And along with the Toxic Deluge to really clear the board, I think it'll be pretty relevant with all these creature base decks. We have uh, Luca with a pretty good hand overall, not going first, so the Gemstone Caver Caverns is active. And you do have a turn one Kinnit to get underneath Dranith, and you also have uh, a Mox Amber to even facilitate more plays. We have Mark keeping a pretty good opening hand as well. Command Tower with a follow up Soul Ring and a turn two Dranith can also be very impactful in a lot of games with a Finale of the Station Tutor. Our own Dr. Vuski kept a turn one Saracen and had to multi six, so got rid of the Otawara. Kept an Alliant Tutor to be able to fetch any you know impactful artifacts or enchantments with some ramp in the Talisman and Fire Covenant as a way to remove troublesome creatures. So, pretty good set of hands from everybody. Let's go ahead and jump into the game. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe, uh, leave a like or a comment if you enjoy our gameplay. As we've been doing recently, um, if you catch any errors, we'll give you a shout out. The person that caught our errors um, last time we made one of these videos, his name was Charlie MTG. So congratulations to Charlie MTG. Congrats. Yeah, we got one error or two errors. So good job, bro. Or bro bread, <laughs> do dead. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the game. All right, let's jump right in. All right, jumping into the game. Looks like Kane's going first, but Luca's gonna have a pre-game effect, which we saw from his opening hand, playing the Gemstone Cover and discarding a forest. Yeah, Gemstone Cavern's really great, uh, especially in canon to get underneath the Dranith Magistrates. And Luca does, is not aware of the Dranith Magistrate in Mark's hand, but it does help you uh, really just get underneath a turn one and having the Mox Amber turn it on as well, getting that profit or distortion that we saw earlier, that's gonna be super critical. Yep, so as you said, uh, goes for the turn one cannon, plays the Mox Amber, top stack a Soul Ring, which is really strong, is able to float an extra blue with the Mox Amber, and plays the Prophet and the Soul Ring, so pretty well set up for his Fabricate on the following turn. Mark goes for a Command Tower and Soul Ring, and then we talk to Whiskey goes for a Tundra and Sarah Ascendant on their turn one. Oh, Sarah uh, Ascendant's gonna be a pretty good beater here. Yeah. Six plus six plus six, man. Uh, looks like uh, Kane win from a fetch or Bayou play a mana bolt, uh, float three and place a toxic deluge. X is equal to six, wiping the board. Oh, one of your favorite cards, and I just did. I do love me that card. Put it on every deck if I can. <laughs> Yo, Urza uh, Saga coming out from Luca. He plays a cannon, so again, gets underneath the Dranith that we probably know, uh, suspect it's coming next turn from Mark. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to tell if he. If Mark drew anything else of a uh, value, but getting the Dranith underneath two of the other players would be one of the one of the best things. Looks like Mark is contemplating it and decides to go for the Dranith. So, very crucial top deck from uh, from Luca there. Yeah, that's all ring kind of changed how that game was played. Doctor Vuski goes for an Light and Tour on his upkeep. Will likely get a fish. If you ever played at FNM or CDH tournaments, get the fish, man. Nobody pays for it. It literally wins the game. It's, you should might as well say it. Mr. Grimora wins the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, you can sometimes get screwed over by like heavy creature card based decks where the fish doesn't really go in. But as you can see here, everyone's going to be running up mana artifacts and stuff. So it's just a little late to get this fish down. So uh, we'll see if it does pay off if everyone else really does. I mean, we know that um, they have counter magic and other other things at their disposal but let's see what Kane does yep uh, as the earthquake was happening on screen goes for the winds of heath and I think just passes his turn so Kane has been pretty much uh land go 
uh, kind of controlish uh, mm -hmm. deck. Looks like it's Lucas' turn. Uh, goes for a cannon activation. So there's seven mana. And what are we gonna get? Elvish Mystic. You love. Yeah, you hate to see it when you're playing cannon. I love to see that when they get it. It's great. <laughs> uh, it's like, why do I have these dead cards in my deck? <laughs> Marcos for a Hash of Oasis. I have never seen this card before until this. And then goes for a Final Devastation. Um, X is equal to 2 2. Um, he's been able to pay for the Mystic Remorse, so Dr. Wisk will be able to draw an extra card. So he's already paying dividends. Goes for the Devoted Druid, which is half the combo for the. Um... Gosh, what's the name of that artifact? Enchantment? It's an instant called uh, Swift instant. Reconfiguration. It turns yeah. your it turns it into an artifact or into a vehicle, and then it doesn't mm -hmm. become a creature and it doesn't have, doesn't have summoning sickness and can't die. So, pretty good. Yeah, very good, very good for Tyam, and it deals with counters, which is very uh, very relevant to Tyam itself. But Doctor Risky saw him pay for the fish. Um, you know what do you what do you really think he's gonna do with his turn here? Uh. He still has a mana rock, so you can just have to play the mana rock since he can't play them now. Maybe keep some mana up for, you know, people turning the win, uh, mm -hmm. which I think Mark's doing currently right now. Uh, looks like he drew a mana crypt, so easily play the talisman that he had himself in the hand right now. Um, bunch of little dice here and there. Just, yeah, Luke is helping uh, Dr. Buskiava, showing how many counters there are in the Mystic Remora. Yeah, from the cumulative upkeep. Sometimes I, I, I've put it off to the side. There's the Talavism and Dominance that we've had before. So, leaves uh, three mana open, all of relevant colors. So, pretty good. Yeah. Kane goes for his upkeep. Uh, uses all his color mana to untap the mana bolt. Um, so, currently, does not have a color mana. So, we'll see if he's able to play a land, plays a plateau. So, at least he has white and red plus colorless. So, we'll see how that works out for him. Mm -hmm. Could always be holding up a silence. Yep. Deflecting SWAT or. That kind of magic or or elemental blast. Um, Very true. Lucas uh, or Saga triggers goes for a mox Sopo, so this will be able to produce in double color. We know he has a fabricate in hand, so uh, has three for Soul Ring, two for mox Sopo, making two blue and three colorless. Uses uh, one of the blues and two colorless to grab to play fabricate, triggering the Mystic Remora. Does not pay for it, so Doctor Who's will draw a card. Yeah, never we'll since the, the printing of. Uh... Of the one ring it's always been a battle of do you want to try to go for the win here or do you want to you know, go for value kind of protect yourself but it seems like luca here is going to be trying to go for the win um once you're able to get the basal monolith down the mystic remora doesn't really matter anymore so you really just need to get past this early on slot of uh counter magic if you're going to complete your combo yeah so luca goes for the basal monolith talk to whisker respond to the fire covenant um, trying to kill the Draneth and the, the Water Druid. Gets countered by Fierce Garden Chip, and that will drop my car. So, you know, top deck Force of Will, baby! Does not look like it, and the Soft Monolith will resolve. Here comes mm -hmm. the Infinite Mana. There is also a point here to interact. If you can destroy the Basalt Monolith on the stack, uh, Luka doesn't have enough mana to re untap it. Oh, Because he sure. does not have three. So, yeah, it's a. Uh, Pretty unfortunate, but here, uh, Basalt Monolith generates infinite Mr. Grimora trigger. You're always able to pay for it. And this usually gets, yeah, Thrasios um, to draw the rest of the deck here. Yep. So we'll now see you can activate get. Thrasios. Um, I think Luca got really excited that like he's getting really close to win. Um, normally, he only has, uh, you know, co infinite colorless mana. Um, so he's not currently able to, you know, play all his color spells as he's currently doing he'll catch this in a second yes um wandering a archaic can be played which is yeah. relevant for a counter magic but um yeah and luca also did decide to leave uh three cards on the top sometimes you can't get brain freezed if you try to go for something so it's a little uh it's just taking a precautionary at that point but all the free mana rocks come out and just finale of devastation again to to play everything yeah, I think this is where he notices that he needs colored mana. So he gets a uh, mirror, mirror, mirror to copy a land, uh, untap it, tap it again for land, for color, copy it, hold the activation, kind of kind of walk us through that uh, deck deck, one of your videos, that combo, I guess. Yes, yeah, you'll be copying uh, Tropical Island, tapping it for mana, and then also copying um, Basalt Monolith. And you'll put all these copies on the stack and resolve them whenever it's Basalt Monolith, you untap it. Whenever it's the Tropical Island, you tap it for a color. And that's how you can get your colored and win. So, well played, Luca. 
What a game. What a game. Always love to see a Kinnan player win, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's it's been uh, kind of rare on this channel so far, so... Usually thank it never Luka. happens. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Luca, for pulling it out, showing the Kinnan's not that bad. <laughs> Taking one for the boys. Yeah, it was well played by him. I know towards the end of the game, he got a little, you know, fast, got excited. He, you know, the win, he already had the win, he just get there, right? He's just mm. crossing his T's, zoning his eyes at that point, but well played by him. Um, I think, you know, Dr. Vuski tried to interact on this tag a couple times, or not just once, with the power coming to board wipe uh, the board, tried to deal with it then. Mm. Um, actually, I guess Kane also board wiped the board, the, pre the previous turn as well, or turn one, turn two. The toxic deluge so a little boy wipes his game or attempted to yeah the uh, the toxic deluge was actually a pretty good keep i think uh kane's hand was good overall just didn't really end up getting the uh the mana to facilitate it the speed that he needed to uh, to play at yeah and i guess the mark i don't know i don't i'm not familiar with this deck too much but he i know he was setting up with the devoted droid on his turn mm -hmm. so potentially also going for the win if he was so able he if he was so able to untap so Pretty quick game, you know, pretty standard CDH, kind of what we see at our local game store when we, you know, when we play there. Yeah, agreed. I I, I would say uh, time's more of an anomaly, but all, all the three of those other decks, I see them a good amount. So. Yeah. Congratulations to Luke on his win. You'll be able to actually find the full bot unedited on the Level 7's YouTube webpage. Um, that's where we stream every Saturday, our local CDH uh, tournaments. As we mentioned before, we partnered up with our local game store, Level 7 Games. Uh, local game store for Denver, Colorado. We go there every Saturday to play. Pretty cool crowd, great atmosphere. Um, Staff's friendly. I honestly don't have any complaints. I think they handle most situations pretty well. Pretty, you know, down to earth people. So, ever in the Met Denver metro area, before skiing or after skiing or checking some of the highs, go check them out. Worth your time. We've also partnered up with Chaos Tournaments, uh, CVH Bronze Spell Table Tournament. Um, I think they play once uh, a month, and I know, like we mentioned before, Nate has played on a bunch of them. Great crowd. They, you know, they, they take, you know, the integrity of their tournaments, you know, pretty well. They ban people for cheating, so that's always good to see. They're not in it for the money. They're like, you know, they want to keep the integrity of the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, awesome, everybody. Thanks for watching. As always, uh, Leave a comment or a like if you catch any mistakes let us know so we can fix them in the future and we'll also give you a shout out if you catch the most um but with that there's a fly flying around <laughs> uh stay basic and have a wonderful day yeah keep it basic <laughs>